Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another Echoes of Mana video, and today I'm going to do two things. One of them is I'm going to do something that a ton of people have been asking for. I'm going to talk about a base two-star character, and that two-star character is going to be Lucius, who I think has a big-time role in the upcoming in-game meta for Echoes of Mana. Now, we haven't gotten here yet, but I'm going to talk about what that future meta looks like and how you can get your account ready to participate in it, and it's actually fairly free to play for Okay, a lot of this idea comes from a Reddit post I was reading by Wishless Star. What they said was, why are people not spamming Crimson Wizard on co-op? Absolutely broken for level 75 for free to play that can equal the DPS of level 100 characters. Now, Wishless Star got a little bit of hate in the comments for this post, and I think they're just ahead of their time. Like, I think Wishless Star is actually correct about Crimson Wizard, and when you said that free to play players could have Crimson Wizard already, it's actually kind of tough for a lot of them. Your account does have to be at a certain level before you can go get him, but you will get there. It's in the game, tower's not going away, and eventually everyone will have Crimson Wizard if you play long enough. Now, Crimson Wizard has a skill, Exploder. It's a multi-hit fire magic skill that builds up chains incredibly fast. You can build a chain up to 200, you get a 5% damage boost every 10 that your chain gets to. That's a 100% damage boost if you get that chain all the way maxed out. Exploder, hitting as many times as it does, if you have a lot of Crimson Wizards in a fight exploding a boss, you're going to get that chain built up very, very fast. Also, Popoy has the same skill, so they're going to be very important for this upcoming like Fire Mage meta that I see descending on Echoes of Mana. Now, where does Julius fit into this? Well, let's go look at Julius. He's currently the only unit in the game with a Spirit Break. Here's my plus six Julius that I'm currently leveling up kind of in anticipation for this. And if we look at his skill, he has Frightful Ripple, Spirit minus 35% for 25 seconds, effect boosted by skill level. So this is it, it's maxed out right here, right? I've fully unleashed the guy. And as a two star unit, it's very easy to fully unleash him. Like you do not have to do a lot of pulls to be able to fully unleash two star units in this game. It's just not tough. So. Frightful Ripple is going to be an important skill for the upcoming Fire Mage meta, in my opinion. Right now, what the in-game meta is, is it's Duran using his Constitution Break, and then you have Reese coming in over the top, you have these other physical damage dealers, Shiloh, you know, more Durans coming in to pile on the damage, and if we look at Duran's Constitution Break, that is really kind of defining what the in-game meta is. Uh, let's see. It's a, what, minus 35% for 25 seconds. That's the same. That's the same percent down and the same length of time as the base two-star units spirit break. So, how important Duran is for the current physical meta? I think Lucio could be just that important for the mage meta. Now, here's the rest of it. If you're thinking about trying to build up your account to get ready for there, what would I suggest that you have? Obviously, Crimson Wizard's going to be a big one, and I think um, if this meta fully lands, everyone in the group will want to have a Crimson Wizard. You would also want to bring another mage with you. Popoy would be the best one. Angela would be good. A three-star mage could also do this work and if we look at memory gems there's going to be some very important memory gems for this meta if you're thinking about getting them ready and those are the mana regeneration memory gems the four star version is rulers of the world that you see on the screen here there are um less rare versions of this as well but uh wall field inactive recover mp plus you know however much it's 17 as a plus one here every 10 seconds bosses have a lot of hp Mages do zero damage when they're out of mana, so you want to put one in, drop all the spells you can, swap them out, have them start regenerating their mana, have another mage in there to start dropping bombs, you know, or, or I guess you could have Angela go in there and start tanking, because Angela's a tank, and we all know it, except for Angela and her stats and everything about her kit, so she's mailing. Anyway, um, yeah. If you want to regenerate mana, it's a lot safer to be on the bench regenerating it with a memory gem instead of meleeing a boss as a low HP, low constitution, low spirit unit. Keep that in mind. So I think cards like this will be important for that meta. Now, can Julius, who the, uh, we're talking a lot about in this video, 
do the job of caring for you. Not really. Like, I'm going to put his stats on the screen, and I'm going to compare his stats to a 3-star mage and a 4-star mage. We're going to use Angela in this case. And you can see that his int really doesn't hold up, especially to a base 4-star unit's max int. Um, and his luck in particular also falls flat. And luck is very important, you guys. Critting in this game is double damage. That's a big deal. So having significantly less luck than a 3 and 4 star base unit will hurt him in the long run. But it is going to be easier to get these max stats. Where with a 4 star unit, you know, you're going to have to get a lot of dupes before you get that max. I still just think Julius is not going to be your carry. I think you're going to want to be able to bring him in, debuff the boss, swap to one of your other two hard hitting mages, and then go to town. If you're playing with other like big time whales who might have three like maybe they have crimson wizard and two four star base mages you could still contribute to that group with your with your crimson wizard and your julius and it could be a really awesome way to participate in the in-game meta as a free to play or low spender and that's where i think julius's role is going to be defined in this game i don't think he has the damage potential to be a like big time carry but as an enabler as somebody who could support your mages doing damage, especially as bosses get harder and harder and they get more and more spirit, the more and more spirit a boss has, the more and more a spirit break matters. He's currently the only unit in the game with a spirit break and I think that makes him at least valuable for that. So there's my video kind of talking about Julius and predicting the uh, maybe future in-game meta for Echoes of Mana. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but it sure kind of makes sense. It all seems to add up to me. Let me know what you think in the comments, though. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you next time. Peace.